Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Winkler here, and this is kind of a, a special video. I've done one other of these, but um, this is recorded during the COVID-19 outbreak where some of our challenges have become different. And unlike a lot of the things that we faced in previous years, um, we haven't had a chance to prepare for any of this. We've had to make major changes since January in the way that we run the day-to-day -day operations of our business. So I want to take a minute and talk about some of these challenges that are changed and hopefully some solutions to them, right? But we all have to react so quickly now because we've changed so much. And a sad truth of our life is there are bad actors waiting to take advantage of this. Okay. So let's get dirty here. I have a new remote user, Lori, and Lori has always been worked in the office and all this good stuff. So she's got her work PC at home and she goes through and um, it's 5.30 in the afternoon and she's uh, watching Netflix or you know, doing her fantasy football league or watching cat videos, could be anything, right? Um, so that she goes through and does that, but nine o'clock the next morning, she logs in any things that she has picked up, any garbage that has turned up on her machine while she's not attached to our corporate security controls is now being attached to our corporate VPN and it's hitting our network, right? This is an old problem up to a certain point where there's always been remote users and this has been the problem, but it's now multiplied by your entire user base. So any of these problems are going to be much larger in this kind of onesie twosie way we've always done to spot it. It's not gonna work so well anymore just because of the scale, okay? And also looking at our friend Lori, we have a new problem or a newish problem with user impersonation. Um, is that Lori, is that really Lori logging in for her house or is that a bad actor, right? Because you have a certain amount of people that are absolutely waiting to hurt you because you're not prepared. Um, go ahead and Google it and look at your favorite periodical. It was a couple of uh, nice ones on Wired yesterday about attackers waiting to get in for people who are disorganized like this, right? Who are just still trying to figure things out. So we don't know if it's Lori. We don't know if it's a bad actor, right? It's a real problem. There's always been this kind of hidden third factor of authentication, right? You have a password and that's good. And you've got some variety of we know the machine or we know the location. But there's always been the factor of, well, Lori's in the building and the people see her and they would notice if our bad actor from a bad movie um, had showed up and logged into her desk. And they can't tell that with whether it's Lori or not from the remote, right? So um, rather than deal with this question, can we determine if users are under duress? Right? It might be someone physically with a gun to their head, and it might be like um, an express kidnapping that we saw down uh, in some of these rougher countries for a while. So you get into the back of what you think is an Uber, and they just beat the heck out of you until you uh, log into where they want you to, or they um, make you max out your ATM card. Right, It's a real problem in some places, and it is slipping into our post-corona reality to say that how much faith are you putting in your MFA from a bad actor that can now just grab someone off the street and get into your network, impersonation is turning into a real problem. Okay, this is our network kind of circa the beginning of this year. We have our clouds, our applications, they're good, we've set them up well. We have our users and our machines and a plant environment somewhere and some remote users. We've had months or years, sometimes a lot of years, to work out how to do this, and it runs pretty well. It's not paradise, but we got it down. We got our hands on this. Our unfortunate current reality is the machines are in almost every data center turning into a lights out at this point. But I have a series of remote users that are everywhere who are bringing all of their problems to work with them. And beyond the fact that we have the on again, off again that I talked about in the first example, People are using new means to communicate with each other, right? So someone has to SSH in because they're not there. People are Zoom meeting each other like mad. I've got remote users that are hitting these clouds, not through my single sign-on, but through whatever means are available. And we suddenly have a lot more propagation that's not going through your corporate controls because our P2P, our user-to-user, -user, has increased multiplied by a lot of protocols. So I guess what this means is all of these great systems we have set up, right? Some really good stuff um, is now overburdened because we never meant it, meant it to have to run this hard, right? It's turning into a real problem. And where we used to be able to kind of muddle along and fix it as it happened, suddenly we need to be a heck of a lot more efficient. Okay, so what this means is with this current disaster, it is a recipe for just that. Things can drop in the soup very, very fast. And brother, I'm here to help you. 
right? IBM security, we've spent a lot of time working on this, a lot longer than we've had COVID because we're a security company, but we, um, we've figured out a lot of this stuff and how we can take these problems and put them into scale. So let's start with our first hero, and this is NetFlow, right? So if we take our friend Lori, who's newly at home, and she has been hacked, has a virus, or has both, this is a good user who now has a problem. Uh, they go and they attach to the corporate VPN, but behind that concentrator, I'm going to start grabbing NetFlows. Now, to any of you who are NetFlow novices, this is a protocol of communication that is a record of every transaction on the network. It comes from your edge devices, like your firewalls, or from your routers and switches, right? And this is good. And it's going to send it to our friend QRadar, right? So what we're going to see here is if somebody's trying to back hack the network by coming in through Lori's login, I'll see it. If there's a virus trying to infect other things, I'll see it. And even if you have a good intrusion prevention or a good firewall system that your VPN concentrator, it won't necessarily spot some of these things that look like normal and reasonable transactions unless they have all of the other data that's hitting the SIM, right? So it, it's a difficult spot. And we're gonna make that firewall, that VPN concentrator of yours a lot smarter by taking these NetFlow records, right? So we will use NetFlow to solve that problem, okay? Um, again, so if you look at this, uh, the complicated network diagram from earlier, and I'm going to drop some NetFlow collectors out there, right? The little green dots. And I'm going to add these as well to my QRadar. And the same way we look at that single remote user case, I've got uh, folks that might be logging directly into your assets, right? Because the, the single server may be overwhelmed. It may be we never planned for this. You may not have the licenses for it. And I'm going to put it inside the data center so anytime we start seeing communications that don't make sense, we're going to alert on it at QRadar, and I'll show you what we do with those alerts in just a minute. But the whole plan is here, if I have a bad actor or a good actor that means well but just doing something dumb, um, I will be able to tell you in minutes, not days or weeks, and God forbid not a call from the FBI, right? No one ever wants to see that. So we will use NetFlow. We will add it to your QRadar algorithm. We will add it to it, and this is native, and just pour it in and it works, um, to tell you if a bad thing happens before it becomes a bad thing. Uh, one more thought on this one before I flip to the next concept, and this is generally something that's been attached to industrial controllers, but now it makes sense a lot more with a standard user-based network, is there's machines that should talk to each other and machines that shouldn't. Right, so if I have a DHCP server, most people should be getting DHCP from it and nothing else, right? And there's a couple of admins that should be talking to it at that level where they maintain it and it's all well and good. But a DHCP server should never, aside from assigning addresses, be talking to um, an SAP server ever. So we can look at the communication between it to say, hey, I've got users and that's fine and they get a DHCP address and they go hit the SAP and they do their day's work. But the servers shouldn't be talking to each other without the few weird exceptions so that we can tell if there's illicit communication before it turns into a problem. This is the value in NetFlow, and it used to be we didn't really need it. Now we really do. Okay? So, cool. So I want to talk about UBA, User Behavioral Analytics, and this has been in QRadar for years now. Um, but we need to kind of reprofile it to show the new normal. So if we look back at this kind of database of um, what users do and go back to our base precepts, and I'm going to say users by rights, users by time, and users by access. So I look at a pattern of our friend Lori who's now working out of her house instead of working out of an office environment, and she's going to go through and she's going to um, act in a way that makes sense and makes more sense over time. And I know we have to do some of this so fast. UBA is going to start giving you valuable data in minutes, although it doesn't have a fully built profile for over a month. Okay, fair enough. Um, but if we see users that are behaving differently because they're at home or insomnia has kicked in or people are home anyway, so they're working at three in the morning, we'll pick up this new pattern, but we will still spot the bad actors because of the way they're acting out of this new normal. And we'll just drop them out of your network. UBA has always been a good tool, but if we retap it just a little bit, we're going to make it something that spots for this kind of new normal in such a way that'll keep us ahead of the curve. Okay, so here's the full process, the full Monty and what we want to accomplish. Um, I have net flows and I have logs. We've always had these, but now we add a few more flows to this. 
so that we can spot bad actors before they become a problem and they take down your environment. And seriously, guys, I encourage you to go Google it or find your technical news source of choice. I like the register and I like Wired, but you go where you like and you will see there's real bad actors right now trying to literally waiting for you to have a problem because your system's overburdened. So we take the flows and logs, we send them to QRadar. QRadar determines what a bad actor is, determines what a problem is. And once it's found the problem, right, once it has the problem, we send it on to our case management. Our case management is how we refer to it in cloud packs. It is the technology we've always called resilient, but QRadar determines that there is a problem. Hey, we've seen a pattern of events from logs and flows. Um, that we know is a problem, we send it on to resilient and you never want to take your hand all the way off a security tiller, never, right? So you've got a user in there that says, oh man, Lori's got a bad actor that's trying to tunnel in through her machine. So I want to go through and I want to make an automated change to one of my other systems, right? So any of these kind of systems we've been talking about, um, I'm going to go through and I'm going to make a, a, a policy change in firewall to say, hey, I need to put them in a higher risk group. I need to go to the identity access system and say, oh, maybe while someone's behaving a little funny while they're under duress, um, I want to go through and I want to raise the authentication level, make, make a phone call, whatever. There's things we can do to change these policies, some of which are basic blocking, some of which aren't. But you have a person there that says, oh, yes, change this, no, don't. But he's clicking one button because these playbooks are written, right? So this is all of your IBM tools. And this is the, the future we've been trying to build you for a while. But now we don't have the time to wait and do this slowly. You got your QRadar in play. Let's add the net flows. Let's do it right. You have your resilient, either with or without the kind of cloud pack environment, right? That's going to do the case management. So your guy's doing it because they suddenly have a lot more unknowns can do it quickly. And we use these Ansible playbooks so that it's just a matter of clicking into it and says, yes, make those changes. So that those playbooks will go through and do the things that he would have to have logged into separate consoles for, okay? So here's the plan, guys. Get your NetFlow in play, absolutely do it, and we'll hook it into your QRadar, and this is good. From this, we will be able to determine who your bad actors are, before they can take down your network or steal your data. And if we can get resilient in place, either with or without the cloud pack infrastructure, right? And there's a whole separate presentation on that. We can go through and we can make it so your guys make these changes painlessly and aren't running from place to place hammering on consoles. And during quarantine times, we'll just set this up for you. Guys, I am Mike Winkler, and this has been about how to take care of your network with all of your newly remote users. Thank you.